Well, today is the uh, 4th of July here in Cheyenne, and as you can see, it's raining out. Weather is pretty dicey. It's been raining almost every day here for the past month, month and a half, which is very unusual for this uh, time of year here. Being this how it's supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to be in our dry period. And well, seeing as how uh, it doesn't pay to be outside today, I figured I'd do something else. So I ripped apart my old camcorder, which I no longer am using. And this is the guts of it. Down in the front here. Uh, we have this thing here is the uh, light. The camera that lights up. And up here is the mic, which is on the back here. There are some processing chips here. Over here are some more switches and then uh, on the other side here is where I have a battery plugged in and the battery connects, feeds power in over here. And uh, here are the guts of the camera. Sony chip, I think it's probably like a DSP or something. And then here here is where, uh, this is the actual lens, and way back here is the CCD. And now on the CCD sensor here, which is back here, you have the lens which is attached to the front here, and there's actually three motors on here. There's a motor down here, a motor here, and a motor up here where my finger is. And they each do different functions for the lens. Now the motor down here, this motor uh, controls the zoom of the lens. It actually moves the second lens element uh, back and forth, depending on how much you want to zoom in. This motor here focuses the lens, and that does a. Uh, there's an element. I think it's behind uh, uh, the iris. That does the focusing. And then up here, this is the motor that controls your iris. And now these cameras, they have a very simple iris. It's actually a, uh, there's actually two V-shaped dia diaphragms that close in on each other. And it's, uh, it serves the same purpose as uh, uh, the more professional cameras, which have a, uh, if you've ever seen the James Bond intros, that's how those irises are set up, but this iris uh, sets up. It's two V-shaped, two V-shaped diagrams. I'll give you a demonstration here. It's like two, uh, two V-shaped diagrams, and when the iris wants to close down, it just closes those two together like this. And when it wants to open them up, and when it wants to open them up it pulls them apart like this, and that's how it controls light getting into the camera. Now here's the uh, the VTR section of the camera. This is an 8mm camera, and you've got uh, your tape fits in here on these two spools, and it wraps around this head here. This is called helical scanning, and what I'll do... Actually, I don't know if I can do it, because... Uh, Wait a second, the switch is, the switch is right up here. If I push a switch, I can eject the tape. So I'm going to put the tape in here, and I'll close it, and you'll see, uh, you'll see it wrap around. There it goes. And so the head spins around here, and there are heads on the tape, which read tracks that are recorded uh, on an angle on the tape. I'll eject the tape here. It's going to unwind, lift, and it's going to pop the tape out. Put it back in. Now here's a look at the head. There's actually three heads on this camera. There's one, there's two, 
and then there's three. And how it works, two of the heads are this head right here and this head right here are 180 degrees opposite of each other. And as this spins, the electronics inside switch, diff switch between the different heads depending on which one is reading the track. And that's how it can record uh, the signal like this, like it is with a spinning head. Because if you just had a fixed uh, stationary head, the tape would have to move through the camcorder at a much faster speed. And then there's this head right here. This is a flying erase head, and what it does is it erases the previous track on the camera that was there before. It has to do that because this camera does not have a, a, a dedicated erase head like you would say, like you would have on, say, a VHS machine. So you need that there because if you didn't erase the previous track when it recorded over that, yeah, uh, it would still have the old track on there, and that would cause interference with the picture. It's like you know with the VHS where you uh, record over a tape right at the very beginning when you start the recording you got that uh, sort of rainbow pattern that's sort of moving around the screen. Uh, you would kind of have the same thing here and that's not uh, exactly uh, uh, desirable so that's why they put that head there. And this is a top side view of the camera you can see uh, the three separate components. Microphone the lens assembly. Here, I'll uh, we'll take one last look. That's the uh, CCD right there in the back. Pretty small. I'm gonna say that's maybe a quarter of an inch, uh, a one quarter inch sensor. Pretty small. And last but not least, here is the fully assembled and recompleted product.